The Rangers' August win streak is over. Julio Pablo Martinez is going to be a big leaguer, and the Rangers get some respect in the latest Locked On Power Rankings. Breaking down all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, the founder and host for all five seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Today is Thursday, August 10th. Your Rangers are 68 and 47, alone in first place atop the AOS with a two game lead over those stinking Houston Astros at time of recording because they have not played their game against Baltimore just yet. So that will either be one and a half games or two and a half games, depending on how that finale goes. But thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Subscribe on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into the big news of the day, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, the big news that came out yesterday after the Rangers' zero to two loss to the freaking Oakland A's in Oakland. Oakland, is that Julio Pablo Martinez is going to be a big leaguer at some point this weekend. I believe the move will probably be made on Friday, but if you don't know much about JPM, he is a former top prospect to the Rangers, signed in 2018 out of Cuba for $2.8 million. They had a lot of extra international bonus pool money because they were going for a certain guy named uh, Shohei Otani and unfortunately did not get him. So they had some extra money to spend, so they went and got this guy out of Cuba who had a lot of promise and early on, he was a pretty pretty highly ranked prospect in 2019 he was the rangers number two prospect according to mlb pipeline but if you look at the state of the farm and the prospects the other prospects at the top 10 at that point in 2019 you have number one prospect hans kraus yikes uh jpm at two number three colwin number four anderson tejeda number five bubba thompson six leo Tavares, seven joe palumbo eight jonathan hernandez nine brock burke and ten Cole Reagans, who I actually will get to in segment two. I, I teased talking about him in yesterday's show, but I uh, kind of forgot because some other things happened. But JPM is going to be a big leaguer, and this is not something that I thought was going to happen well as recently as in, in the last three years. This year, I was looking at his, had been looking at his round rock numbers, and, and they've been pretty good, but it was just kind of a thing that you thought, eh, I don't really know if he's going to crack the big league roster. There's some other guys ahead of him. There's got to be some some 40-man movement, but uh, it looks like it. this might end up being a paternity list-related move because Evan Grant of the Dallas Morning News said that there are quite a few expectant fathers, so that might end up being what gets him called up to the big leagues. I thought it was it felt kind of random but that kind of move makes a little bit of sense wanting to get a guy whose bat has been really hot in, in an offense that literally just got shut out by a bullpen game in Oakland which has the worst bullpen in the modern era and the worst pitching staff in the modern era and it's a really frustrating way to lose an eight game winning streak but again that's the way baseball go but there are a few options that the Rangers have if they want to make well when they have to make a 40-man move. If you're looking at guys on the minor league side, there are there's Bubba Thompson, there's Dustin Harris, Yeri Rodriguez, Alex Beast, Owen White, Cole Wynn, and Glenn Otto. I don't know that any of those guys will be the ones that, that get cut. If, if there is one, I think Yeri Rodriguez is going to be the first on the chopping block. If you're looking at the major league roster, some guys on the 40-man who could get the axe is maybe Robbie Grossman or Travis Jankowski. I don't think that's happening. I don't think that's happening for either of those guys. Both of them have had their moments and Grossman's been really hot as of late. And for whatever reason, the Rangers really love seeing Robbie Grossman out there. So I don't think that's happening. And Jankowski, I think that'd be really short-sighted to to do that. I, I don't really know why it's not Dustin Harris, who's already on the 40 man or Bubba Thompson that's getting the call up, but it seems like the Rangers want to add a bat who is, is doing some good things. So my only thought is that Brad Miller goes from the 10 day IL to the 60 day IL, which would open up a 40 man spot. And then we don't see Brad Miller again for the rest of this year, which I, I would be, honestly be totally okay with. But JPM this year in AAA Round Rock has been fantastic. 67 games, just over 300 plate appearances. He's got 12 home runs, four triples, 
20 doubles, slash line of 312, 427, 565, and OPS just eight points shy of 1,000 on the year. That is really, really good stuff from him. He's also stolen 33 bases just four times, caught stealing. He's a guy whose speed has always been his loudest tool. He was a guy who was supposed to be a five average-ish tool player. Not a guy who had the highest upside, and I thought 2.8 million for him at the time felt like a bit much. And, you know, it kind of proved out to be right. He was a guy whose hype was was really high after spending the 2018 season split between Spokane and short season and the Dominican Summer League. Then he went to the Arizona Fall League and in 13 games there had a 916 OPS as a 22 year old back in 2018. So the hype, that's why he was the number two prospect in the Rangers system heading into 2019. But in 2019, he spent time between Down East and Frisco or Down East and, and Hickory and just really kind of disappointed 500 played appearances for them there a 737 ops as a 23 year old who is splitting time between both of those levels and at hickory which was low a at the time he was a year and a half older than the average player so i mean is an older guy and not really performing that well then the 2020 season happens there's no minor league season he had 341 played appearances in frisco as a 25 year old in 2021 a 724 ops and that was kind of when i saw him for the first time and thought yeah i don't really get the hype. And then in 2022, he had a, a solid season. Not great, but solid enough. And in Frisco, he had an 831 OPS. That was his second season in Frisco. He was about two years older than the average player at 26. And in 301 plate appearances there, had an 831 OPS. You thought, okay, fine. Then he gets moved up to Round Rock, 40, 41 games there, a 724 OPS. You think, all right, fine. He's going to fill some holes in AAA. And be a quad a player maybe he'll make his big league debut maybe not but it, it was seeming it was leaning towards maybe not and then this year he's just been very very good the on base being over 400 at 427 that is an encouraging sign he's got the three four five slash line of what you want from a very good hitter i don't know that he's gonna make a huge splash on the rangers offense right now but this offense needs some help i mean getting shut out in in oakland on a bullpen game is just it's not great and they have a lot of injuries this Rangers team does and we'll get to the positive injury updates that the Rangers got uh, on Wednesday from Jonah Heim and from Nathan Eovaldi but I mean when you take a game where Corey Seager is not in there and you know he's gonna have some more games like that like injury management it's not just the Rangers just punting on the game because they can and they're on an eight-game winning streak and everything's fine no the Rangers know they need every single win they can get and not sweeping Oakland yet is really really frustrating the Rangers it felt like they had a chance to step on the throats of the A's, and it felt like the Rangers should be up at least four games heading into this Thursday game and whatever happens with the A's or with the O's and the Astros. It felt like the Rangers should have at least a three and a half game lead heading into this weekend in the other side of the bay. But that's not where the Rangers are. The Rangers need some boost to their offense. They need some juice. And maybe JPM is the bat to do it because the Rangers need somebody outside of their top four and Mitch Garver to really start to carry this team coming up. We're going to look at who that might be and a little bit of injury updates. And later on, we're going to talk about the latest power rankings. And of course, Cole Wynn doing some absolute work in Kansas City. But first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun you're going to have. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for literally everything. Forget the months of planning in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. The game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, just two taps and they're all you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code locked on MLB for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. 
Shout out to the Everyday for making Locked On Raiders your first listen every single day on Friday's show. I'll be breaking down what's going on on the farm this week. The Raiders take on the Giants this weekend. You can catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now, this shutout loss to the A's is frustrating for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it's just a loss to the A's. Number two, it's a cha- it was a chance for the Rangers to sweep the A's, which they had not done this season. They have played four series so far. The Rangers have won every single series, including a four-game series in Oakland that was a little nervy on that really long road trip where the Rangers kind of felt like they were finding their stride back in May. But the one game the Rangers lost, actually a few of these games the Rangers have lost have been these one-run games, these close games that they just could not get over the hump. And a team that was riding so high on an eight-game winning streak could head into the other side of the bay in a reunion with San Francisco for Bruce Bochy on a nine-game winning streak. That's not what happened. This offense just fell flat, and it wasted a a pretty good performance from Jordan Montgomery. Jordan Montgomery has been very good for the Rangers. Two different outings of six innings and two runs. He had five strikeouts in this one, just one walk, seven hits, was able to work around some trouble on the base pass, and the Rangers only had to use two pitchers, and they were the two pitchers the Rangers got from San St. Louis in Chris Stratton and Jordan Montgomery combined to pitch eight innings. Stratton had two perfect innings of one of, of, um, with one strikeout in a losing situation. And it feels like that's where the Rangers feel comfortable using him is, is not necessarily in the highest leverage situations and, uh, using him for multiple innings. I think that's a, a great thing. We've seen Chris Stratton go multiple innings and multiple different times. Almost It feels like almost every time out, he, he's gone at, at least an inning and a third for the Rangers, but that's good on the Rangers not having to use anybody in high leverage right here. I mean, the Rangers haven't used most of their high leverage guys since, I believe, Wednesday? Was the last time the Rangers used any high leverage guy, or since Monday, I mean? Not Wednesday. Wednesday was yesterday. Um, But they go into the series with a very fresh bullpen against the Giants, who are 5-5 and in the last 10, including losing a two-game, a weird two-game series to the A's, getting swept by those A's um, in the series that they played before, going up against the Angels, who they dropped two out of three to, an, an Angels team that had been really struggling and really desperate for some wins, but this Rangers team should be desperate for every single win because those Astros are hot on their tail. The, the Astros have won the first two games of that series against the O's. They might end up with a sweep, which would just be karma for the whole Kevin Brown situation for the Orioles, which is not coming at an ideal time for the Rangers. They, they could have waited to delay that karma until whatever the next series <laughs> the Orioles play. Uh, and they could have taken care of business against the Astros and give the Rangers some breathing room. But, you know, this offense just needs a little bit more life. They had some good at-bats today or Wednesday, and it was mostly mostly a fine performance. But the Rangers need somebody helping out, providing some heroics at the bottom third of this order. It has been a rough, rough way for Leody Tavares in the month of August and even in the month of July. In August, in nine games, he's got a 535 OPS in the month of July. He only had two home runs and a 625 OPS for that month after an 824 OPS the month before with seven home runs in June and then in May when he had 106 plate appearances and a 935 OPS he looked like an absolute world beater the Rangers don't need him to do that the Rangers just need him to be about the 750 ish OPS player that he's shown that he can be in spurts I mean that's all the Rangers need from him and right now the Rangers need somebody to go on a heater it's looking like his at bats have been much better than the results have shown he's still been a little aggressive and putting him in the five hole in that game in the series finale I don't really get if you're starting to see him feel a little bit comfortable moving him around in the lineup doesn't feel like the move for me but still the Rangers needed something to get this lineup going and whether it's Josh Smith who had some great at bats in this one and just missed a home run if that wall in right field right center field wasn't 800 feet tall in Oakland then he would have had a home run which would have been I believe his fifth on the season Josh Smith I have been Clamming for him to get a few more at bats, and after him having such a, a good day offensively and hitting the absolute tarnation out of that baseball, nearly getting a home run, then it kind of makes me feel a little bit validated there. And Ezekiel Duran, despite his numbers being much worse, he did have a walk in this one and uh, also was hit by pitch and struck out once on a called third strike that, again, was not a strike. I mean, the Rangers have just been really hosed on a lot of those pitches, especially this series. We had one full count to Adoles Garcia, actually twice where Adoles Garcia got rung up on pitches that were outside the zone. We saw it happen a whole lot to Josh Young, and we're seeing it happen a whole lot to Ezekiel Duran, which is really frustrating when he is 
being more patient. Who he hasn't been a very patient hitter, and he keeps getting rung up on these pitches outside the strike zone. It's it's gonna hurt his progress. It's gonna make him want to expand the zone a little bit more. Thankfully, Adoles Garcia has has stuck to it, even when he is getting rung up on called third strikes that are not third strikes. He is still sticking to that plan and and working those walks and has a career high in walks already with a month and a half more than a month and a half left of the season. Hopefully the same can be said for Ezekiel Duran because you'd think eventually the Rangers will stop getting rung up on so many pitches outside the strike zone. I don't know. The, the umpires have just, it feels like, been absolutely terrible this year. And it feels like it's really gone against the Rangers, even though they have one of the best framers in the game. Actually, two of the best framers in the game in Jonah Heim and now Austin Hedges. It feels like the Rangers are getting rung up on those called third strikes just way too often but somebody in this bottom third needs to get going because you're going to have more days like this when Corey Seager is on the shelf you're going to have some days where you know Marcus Simeon and Nathaniel Lowe combined to go over seven with just one walk even though they had some really good at bats and some hard hit balls it's just going to happen you need the depth of this lineup that's why this team was so good early on in the seasons because literally everybody was hitting and the Rangers just need somebody to provide them some life in the bottom third of the order but for the most part this team has gotten significantly better there's this tweet by uh, Jay Cutta um, or Cuda I, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it very good follow on Twitter he just ha- he has these random little graphics a lot of times they're really funny and, and silly and goofy this one was actually pretty helpful and it it was it shows the amount of teams that have progressed in different categories there's the win loss percentage batting average obp slugging percentage then with pitching side it's era fip and whip and the only team to improve in all of those categories from last season is the texas rangers it's just kind of a a nice little reminder of even though this was a frustrating loss in a frustrating way to end the series the Rangers are still doing much, much better. They are still in first place, and they did get some good news on their injury reinforcements that are coming up, and they're getting a little bit of respect in the power rankings. We're going to break down all that and more on the third segment. But first, this word from our sponsors. Shout out to the Avengers for making Locked On Rangers first listen every single day on Monday. Shall we breaking down this big weekend series in the Bay against San Francisco? The Rangers take on the Giants this weekend. You can catch every pitch with the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers. Now the Rangers have had some poor injury luck this year, especially as of late, coming at the worst possible time. But it seems like these reinforcements are finally on the way. Jonah Heim got a great update on him. He has faced live pitching on Wednesday. He said he feels no pain and he could return to the team sometime early in the homestand next week, which starts on Monday. I don't think it'll be Monday, but maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, we could see Jonah Heim back in the lineup. That would be huge, absolutely huge. I don't know what his bat is going to look like. It seems like he is going to hit just left-handed to start. Then if you are platooning him with Mitch Garver, who has been on absolute tear as of late, then you send Sam Huff back down to the minors, unfortunately, which I think is probably what's going to happen because Huff has had some moments, but just has not had the consistency. I do still, I do still think I, I am a believer long term in Sam Huff as a big leaguer, but um, right now, th- this is not the time to find out, unfortunately. But Nathan Ivaldi also got a great update from him on Wednesday. He threw a short bullpen yesterday, 15 to 20 pitches, and he could throw a more substantial bullpen on Saturday. It, Honestly, as long as he's back by that series against the Astros, which is in the beginning of September, I will feel pretty good about that. So the Rangers getting some really positive news there, which is much needed. I mean, the Rangers have a a good starting rotation. I don't know what they're going to do whenever Nathan Eovaldi comes back. I I don't necessarily think you're going to throw Andrew Heaney in the pen or Dane Dunning, but you might. It just might. Depends on how the, their next starts go. Both of those guys are going to start this weekend in the Bay. Projected starter, probable starters for the Rangers. On Friday, it's John Gray. On Saturday, it's Andrew Heaney. And then on Sunday, it's Dane Dunning. I don't want to say that these starts will kind of determine whether they're going to go to the bullpen or not or stick in this rotation and go with a six-man rotation. I think the Rangers might lean towards Dane Dunning in the bullpen just because he's done it so effectively and so recently. And um, his starts haven't been quite as good. As Heaney, even though Heaney's not giving you nearly as much length, I think if you got Dane Dunning in the pen, you have to throw him in there for a couple innings for an Andrew Heaney start, and just having him there as your other long reliever, you have him and Martin Perez in the pen, then I think that's a good place to be for this Rangers team. Um, but still, 
I am looking forward to seeing Nathan Evaldi back. I'm not worried about him having to rush to get up here. Just need him to be fully healthy down the stretch and really just fully healthy for the playoffs. Now, speaking of another starting pitcher, well, who wasn't a starting pitcher with the Rangers, I want to give a shout out to Cole Reagans, who has made his big league debut a few weeks ago with the Kansas City Royals and this week had his best game as a professional probably ever. I think I don't think he had any minor league games that were nearly this good, but in Boston on the 7th, he pitched six and two thirds innings, just allowed one run, one walk, 11 strikeouts, and just four hits. Cole Reagans was a strikeout machine, and he was the best story for the Rangers in spring training. He's averaged 96.2 miles an hour on his fastball this year. It was up literally four miles an hour from what it was last year. And with that spin rate, I, I really thought that he might break into the rotation out of camp. I mean, it's easy to look back in hindsight and think, wow, the Rangers should have just shoved Martin Perez in the bullpen out of like out of the year and put Cole Reagans in the starting rotation. And that's not necessarily how things work. The only difference really in what he's doing in Kansas City versus what he was doing with the Rangers is that he is getting a chance to start every fifth day and they added a cutter. He's only thrown it um, 27 times in the three starts that he's had in Kansas City, but it seems like it's been a very effective pitch for him around 86, 85.6 miles an hour, and it sets up well with that fastball and that really good changeup and that curveball and that cutter as well. So, um, yeah, it would be nice if Cole Reagans was in this rotation. That might end up looking like a really painful trade the Rangers did for all this Chapman. It's easy to second-guess that in hindsight now. Chapman has been very good for the Rangers. He was exactly what the Rangers needed. It would have been nice if Cole Reagans was doing what Aroldis Chapman was doing in the pen if the Rangers put him as a late inning high leverage reliever which I still think they probably should have done if they weren't going to start him instead of throwing him as a you know mid relief to low leverage relief guy I, I thought that was kind of the worst use of him and this trade could hurt a whole lot but if the Rangers go to the World Series if they even make it to the ALCS then I think you kind of have to look back on this trade and and, sh- and shrug your shoulders and um, just deal with the pain of Cole Reagans being very good I wish him nothing but the best even though it causes me a lot of pain to see him going and thriving for somewhere that is not the Texas Rangers but the Texas Rangers are thriving and it got some recognition from my fellow voters in the Locked On Podcast Network the Rangers are and the latest power rankings are number three. And if you look at, if you're watching on YouTube, then you can see this entire graphic. If you're not, I'll just run through the top 10 real quick for those listening. Number one is the Braves, felt pretty obvious. The Orioles at number two, Rangers at number three, Dodgers four, Rays five, Astros unfortunately at six, Toronto Blue Jays at seven, Phillies at eight, who are just coming off a game where Michael Lorenzen threw a no hitter fantastic stuff for him seeing his mom in the crowd just got really really emotional watching that ninth inning really special moment number nine the rangers weekend opponent the giants and number 10 unfortunately those rising seattle mariners i really wish that the mariners weren't thriving like this it's going to make those last 10 games where six of them are against the mariners pretty tough maybe maybe seven of them are against the mariners doesn't doesn't really matter but um hoping that by then the mariners are out of it um but still actually no it is it is seven out of the last 10 games the rangers face the mariners three games at home from the 22nd to the 24th of september and then the final four games of the season in seattle um hopefully those are all games where seattle has already been eliminated from playoff contention they are not currently in a wild card spot but that team is surging and uh unfortunately they are annoyingly good and the Rangers are going to probably face them when Julio Rodriguez is looking like Julio Rodriguez of old, not of early season when he was really, really struggling. But the Rangers being third in this power ranking kind of shows how this season is is it. This is this is what's going on for the Rangers. This is a good, good team. This is a, a team that's getting national respect from my fellow Locked On hosts. I feel like almost every other power rankings had a similar top three to top five, six um, the Rangers being right about at third. This is about where they've been all season. I think this is a proper amount of respect shown to this team, even though the Rays have a little bit better of a record than them right now. The Rays are have been in a free fall basically since July, and they just lost their ace for the season, which is uh, you know a familiar feeling, unfortunately, for the Rangers. But I mean, it just kind of shows that this is a, a good, good team that really deserves the respect that they are getting. And I, I'm excited to 
you know, watch this team go through the playoff run. And I wish that this team would, you know, take more advantage of games like this against the A's. I mean, a bullpen game is is a game that usually most time your team should win. For whatever reason, it has just been the bane of the Rangers' existence this year. It doesn't matter who it's against, whether it's against the A's, whether against the Rays, whether it's against the, you know, Giants or whoever, the Rangers will probably see a bullpen game against the Giants, who it feels like the Giants are throwing a bullpen game you know, basically almost every time through the rotation, and the Giants are really, really good at it. The Rangers have been really, really bad. I mean, there, there was a game against the Guardians earlier this year where the Rangers knocked out the first two pitchers in two innings from two separate injuries, and it's not that I would ever wish that, and it was really, really unfortunate to see for, for the Guardians, but the Rangers you got to take advantage of those games, of games like this. When you have a bullpen game, one of the things that this Rangers offense does really well, and why I think part of the reason why they struggle in bullpen games is that this team is really good at facing a starting pitcher second and third time through the order. Once once they've seen a pitcher once, I mean, this team does a really good job of working pitches and, and knowing what the, the is coming the next time through because this lineup all is is really good at, at not just throwing away at bats most everybody in this lineup will work pretty deep counts and have quality at bats so that everybody else can see what the pitcher is throwing what it actually looks like on the given day and have a better idea of what it will look like the second time through the order because this team doesn't really do a whole lot of early scoring they will pour on runs and bunches but it feels like the the middle innings the you know th- third through fifth six inning um, is is where this team really does a lot of their damage and then we've seen them as of late in against some occasional bullpens you know have some comeback wins like they did in their first six game winning streak of the season in those games against Cleveland and even a little bit of a a comeback against um, some other pretty good bullpens like the Rays Um, but still this, this team needs to figure out whatever it is about bullpen games and you know take advantage of games like this against the A's. The Astros are coming hot. They are a very good team, unfortunately. It is very frustrating to see all these things happen to the Astros this year. I mean, that's not as unfortunate, um, but seeing them still bounce back and be a very good team is is very frustrating. This month of August, not April, this month of August is a chance for the Rangers to separate themselves against the Astros. The Astros have a really tough month of August, and the month of September is pretty much a cakewalk. The Astros have, I think it's it's nine or ten games combined against the A's and Royals in the month of September, where the Rangers will just have a three-game series against the A's. Um, but the rest of this month, there's nobody that's really that intimidating on the schedule. Outside of four games at the Twins, the Twins are a solid team and it looks like they're actually figuring out how to hit and they have probably the best pitching staff in the entirety of major league baseball that is going to be a dangerous combination you'll also face off against joey gallo who um i feel like will hit probably three home runs in that four game series if he is on the field um but still the rest of this month you have three games against the giants who like i said are struggling they're five and five in the last 10 then you have three games against the angels who are an absolute free fall Three games against the Brewers, who are you know clinging to life atop the NL Central, but have also struggled since the break. And you got two games against the Diamondbacks, who have just been absolutely terrible since the calendar turned to July. Then you finish off the month in City Field, three games against the Mets, which I know at least at least one Rangers pitcher. I don't know if he'll be pitching in that game. But at least one who is in their starting rotation and healthy right now will be very motivated to um, do pretty well against his former team and a team that looks absolutely lost right now. So, I mean, that's the rest of these series for the month, and the Rangers need to take advantage. They had an eight-game winning streak, which was great. Winning eight out of nine in this stretch is great. Unfortunately, if the Rangers are going to lose one in this stretch, I feel like losing that Saturday game to the Marlins where John Gray just wasn't great, that felt like the one that was going to be it, but not losing this bullpen game to the A's where you get shut out. Like that, that's just really, really frustrating. But hey, start a new eight-game winning streak on Friday, continue it throughout the series, maybe make it a 10-game winning streak. Who knows? I mean, it's it's entirely possible, but you know, this team needs to take advantage of every single opportunity. It's not going to be easy winning that AL West and getting that second spot, or maybe even the first spot, getting that first round by, which is is going to be incredibly important for the Rangers. It'll give them more time to get healthy. All these injuries, get Corey Seager healthy, get Mitch, um, not Mitch Garver, Jonah Heim healthy, get Josh Young healthy, and get Nathan Eovaldi healthy. This team, when it's fully healthy, is as good or better than anybody else in the AL, including those stinking Houston Astros. So 
take this day off, rest, going to enjoy whatever happens with JPM. I'm, I'm curious to see what the 40-man move will be, which we probably won't know until late on Friday night because it is a West Coast game yet again. Curse the West Coast and their 9 o'clock start times but still the rangers are in a good place despite this annoying frustrating loss and the rangers i think will take full advantage of the rest of this month of august hard to be pissed with a an eight and one start to the month of august but hey anything is possible this ranger team is very good right now so don't forget to enjoy every second of it thank y'all so much for listening and subscribing and until next time don't forget to enjoy first place texas rangers baseball